Well, good day, everybody. Um, I'm going to go over the Macbeth intro with you for those of you who may have missed, whether you're online or maybe you're sick uh, today. So, um, uh, we first of all, we did start off with uh, the other day. There was a background group activity. Now, those of you who are online are going to do the individual one in order to gain those points. So, if you have questions on that, please um, let me know. Uh, for this, um, you were looking, and we looked at six different aspects of. Uh, you know, that would be helpful to know, to understand more about Macbeth. And so we'll talk more about it as we go through. Um, and then we have been focusing, uh, with every unit, we always focus on some uh, form, whether we've done commas, we've done capitalization, then we start doing subject and predicates, and we did phrases and types of phrases, infinitive, preposition, verb. And now we're focusing on clauses and phrases. So we're going to go from phrases into clauses. And remember, now, phrase uh, is a group of words. It's always going to be a fragment, and it's not going to have a subject, predicate, or both. Usually, it won't have both. Example, at her desk, we have a prepositional phrase. There is no verb whatsoever there. You have your preposition at, and your object to the preposition desk. On the counter, by the desk, I have two phrases actually in here. So, it's still a phrase. It's just two of them. On the counter, by the desk. Okay? Because we love Shakespeare. Now with this, I have a subject in we. I have a predicate in love. So since clauses, if you have a subject and predicate, you're going to be a clause. Now, you can be a dependent clause. You can be an independent clause. A dependent clause means you need help. You have a subject predicate, but you're a fragment. An independent clause means you're a sentence. Yay, you graduated. Um, because we love Shakespeare, you have subject, predicate, dependent clause because I need more information. Because we love Shakespeare, we are reading Macbeth. There we go. Now I have completed that thought. Okay. After this weekend, again, no verb. I have a noun, um, but it is the object of a preposition again. Use a lot of prepositions on it. Same thing with my group. No verb, prepositional phrase. In the refrigerator, same. I hope the Browns beat the Chiefs. Oh, I have a subject in I. Okay, that's who it's about. And hope, that's the verb, that's the predicate. Makes sense. I hope the Browns beat the Chiefs. And that is going to be an independent clause. It's a complete thought. Until we finish the Shakespeare unit. We have a subject and we finish is your verb. So until we finish the Shakespeare unit, we have a dependent clause. What about until we finish the Shakespeare unit? We will keep studying Shakespeare. Enjoy the three-day weekend. This is a tricky one. Who am I asking to enjoy? You. This is that subject that's the understood. You, I'm asking you to enjoy the three-day weekend. Okay, so that is an independent clause. Subject you, and then your predicate, enjoy. Now, for this, we're going to be looking at the development of the text. This text is Shakespeare, is make Macbeth, okay, the tragedy of Macbeth. Um, so we're going to analyze it in as best detail as we can and understand the different elements used. We're going to look at complex characters, how these characters in Macbeth, who is star, starts off as such a noble person, and then unfortunately by the end he is basically detested by all. Okay, and The only way people even follow him at the end is not out of love, but out of fear. Okay, so we're going to look at how he has changed. Lady Macbeth, who comes and starts off as strong, very strong woman. And then at the end, though, she has been weakened. And what has changed? Why has this change happened? We will look at that. Uh, this is writing, Shakespeare's writing in an early form called early modern English. Now, this is an old English. Old English, you read old English, you're thinking you're reading a different language. This is early modern English. We basically can get the understanding of a lot of things. It can be difficult at times, but it's not a completely different language, okay? Um, in Shakespeare, it's more important to have a feel for the language, okay, than to really know every word. It's not going to happen. But have an understanding and a feel for what's going on is what we're looking for here. Um, we're going to watch this at another time because I think it's going to be better after we've read and listened to Shakespeare a little bit more that this will be good to, to actually listen to and see how it originally was uh, you know, used, how he, he pronounced his words originally. Let's move on. Oh, no. Next slide. Sorry. Um, the itinerary for Shakespeare is the following. Uh, you'll be responsible for reading this. Uh, you'll be reading. We, we, in, in school, we're going to read it as a class. 
Uh, if you miss a day and you're, you know, maybe you're at home and you're sick and you're coming back, okay, you can find different resources. I put everything up in our modules. Always look at the modules, 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 modules. Um, if your reading is assigned, you'll need to check and read that section. Be sure to check our daily schedule. I'll have everything up there that you can look at. Uh, speaking of Canvas, um, look at Canvas for various resources. I will put some Nope Your Shakespeare up there for those of you, especially online, because it'll give you the regular uh, today's language. It'll translate it into, so it might be easier for you. Feel free to look at summaries of what's going on. It'll be helpful too. Um, we're going to be reading this aloud, so those uh, in the class will have participation points. Uh, when those of you who are at home, that your participation points going to come down to a lot of the discussions that I will put up for just those who are at home. And I will also, uh, the annotations will be part of those who are online and what you'll have to do to get the participation points. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, make sure that you are participating and asking me questions. Those of you at home, keep that in mind that you need to be interacting with me so I can give you points for this. Uh, that will be put up in Canvas and I'll come in more detail later. It's going to be 10 points for every act. Okay. Um, we've researched some things. Factual is objective. Opinion is subjective. We'll look at some things. Shakespeare's the greatest playwright of all time is going to be an opinion. Okay. And that's going to be subjective. That's something we have to, you know, not everyone believes that, you know, a lot of people do, but it doesn't make it true. Okay. There are a lot of people at his time who didn't think he was the greatest. Shakespeare's plays were performed in a theater in London, England called the Globe. That is Factual, that's objective, objective. Shakespeare didn't actually write his plays or sonnets. That's going to be an opinion. That's a subjective, okay? King James VI of Scotland and King James I of England are the same person. That is true. That's objective. He is the same person, okay? The real Macbeth was actually a good person and loved by everyone. That's an opinion. The real Macbeth actually um, had a murder his way to the throne, the throne too. So we don't know if he was a good person or not. King James wrote a book about witchcraft. That is factual. That's objective. King James was um, very uh, taken by witchcraft. He believed that there was a coven of witches who were out to get him at times. And so um, hence Shakespeare in writing this is trying to appeal to King James in some ways. So keep that in mind. Uh, King James wrote a book called Demonology about witchcraft at this time. Women were not allowed to act during Shakespearean time, Shakespeare's time. That is objective. That's a fact. Women were tried and convicted and killed because they were thought to be witches. That is also a fact. That's objective. Shakespeare wrote Macbeth as a way to gain favor with King James. That's an opinion. A lot of people feel that way, but we don't know for sure. Um, so if Simons, you will be having questions over each act. There will be questions. Um, so there'll be five sets of those. Those are going to be more dealing with the plot to make sure you have an understanding of the plot. There'll be annotations that you'll be having to do. Um, especially those not in class will be annotating. Uh, that will be assigned also every time we're reading an act. Uh, we will be working with clauses and phrases. Uh, we're going more towards clauses now. There will be literary concepts for each act we'll be looking at, and, and as we're going over the play, we'll highlight. There'll be a test over Macbeth at the end of the unit, and uh, there's a Minecraft exercise. Those of you at home, I don't know how we're going to do that, but I will try my best to figure out. Uh, and there will be a culminating activity, which will be a formal essay. Okay, If you have questions, go ahead. Feel free to email me. I'll be happy to set up a Google Meet. Anything I can do to help you out. Why should we read Macbeth? This is a good video, introductory video that uh, can be, uh, I think, helpful. So watch this together. There's a play so powerful that an old superstition says its name should never even be uttered in a theater. A play that begins with witchcraft and ends with a bloody, severed head. A play filled with riddles, prophecies, nightmare visions, and lots of brutal murder. A play by William Shakespeare, sometimes referred to as the Scottish play, or the tragedy of Macbeth. First performed at the Globe Theatre in London in 1606, Macbeth is Shakespeare's shortest tragedy. 
it is also one of his most action-packed. In five acts, he recounts the story of a Scottish nobleman who steals the throne, presides over a reign of terror, and then meets a bloody end. Along the way, it asks important questions about ambition, power, and violence that spoke directly to the politics of Shakespeare's time and continue to echo in our own. England in the early 17th century was politically precarious. Queen Elizabeth I died in 1603 without producing an heir, and in a surprise move, her advisers passed the crown to James Stuart, King of Scotland. Two years later, James was subject to an assassination attempt called the Gunpowder Plot. Questions of what made for a legitimate king were on everyone's lips. So Shakespeare must have known he had potent material when he conflated and adapted the stories of a murderous 11th century Scottish king named Macbeth and those of several other Scottish nobles. He found their annals in Holinshed's Chronicles popular 16th century history of Britain and Ireland. Shakespeare would also have known he needed to tell his story in a way that would immediately grab the attention of his diverse and rowdy audience. The Globe welcomed all sections of society. Wealthier patrons watched the stage from covered balconies, while poorer people paid a penny to take in the show from an open-air section called The Pit. Talking, jeering, and cheering was common during performances. There are even accounts of audiences throwing furniture when plays were flops. So Macbeth opens with a literal bang. Thunder cracks and three witches appear. They announce they're searching for a Scottish nobleman war hero named Macbeth, then fly off while chanting a curse that predicts a world gone mad. Fair is foul and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. A scene later, they find Macbeth and his fellow nobleman Banquo. All hail Macbeth, they prophesize. That shalt be king hereafter. King, Macbeth wonders. Just what would he have to do to gain the crown? Macbeth and his wife, Lady Macbeth, soon chart a course of murder, lies, and betrayal. In the ensuing bloodbath, Shakespeare provides viewers with some of the most memorable passages in English literature. Out, damn spot! Out, I say! Lady Macbeth cries when she believes she can't wipe her victim's blood off her hands. Her obsession with guilt is one of many themes that runs through the play, along with the universal tendency to abuse power, the endless cycles of violence and betrayal that define conflict. As is typical with Shakespeare's language, a number of phrases that got their start in the play have been repeated so many times that they now feel commonplace. They include the milk of human kindness, what's done is done, and the famous witch's spell, double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. But Shakespeare saves the juiciest bit of all, for Macbeth himself. Towards the end of the play, Macbeth reflects on the universality of death and the futility of life. Out, out, brief candle, he laments. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Life may be a tale told by an idiot, but Beth is not. Shakespeare's language and characters have entered our cultural consciousness to a rare extent. Directors often use the story to shed light on abuses of power, ranging from the American mafia to dictators across the globe. The play has been adapted to film many times, including Akira Kurosawa's Throne of Blood, which takes place in feudal Japan, and a modernized version called Scotland. PA, in which Macbeth and his rivals are managers of competing fast food restaurants. No matter the presentation, questions of morality, politics, and power are still relevant today. And so, it seems, 
the Shakespeare's of men. Did you enjoy this lesson? If so, please consider supporting our non-profit mission by visiting patreon.com slash TED Okay, I think that was a very good lesson. So, uh, um, fantastic. It really gets a good idea of what we're going to be experiencing as we read Macbeth. So, uh, just remember, you know, that whole idea of just men being able to act. We're going to be looking at the misogyny of this time with men, uh, this idea of this of uh, women, and also we're looking at Lady Macbeth, who be who's a strong character, a strong female character, um, and then for somewhat of other reasons, she seems to lose that strength. Uh, and we'll look at her also as complex as she is, too. So a lot of good things in here. Inside the theater, it, it, it's sometimes been talked about how uh, you can't say when you, you, you're in the side of theater, you don't say Macbeth is not lucky. Uh, you also don't say, you know, good luck. You say break a leg. So I thought this was a nice little funny little clip from The Simpsons. It's very short. So we'll watch it. Thank you, my dear. Please take these free tickets to my play. Why, my play? We thespians believe it's bad luck to mention the name of this particular play out loud. You mean Macbeth? Quiet, you blundering fool! You curse us all! What, by saying Macbeth? Stop saying it! Saying what? Macbeth! Ah, now I've said it. All right, so that's pretty fine. So um, we're going to uh, what you had to do then today, so uh, to fill out the literary term chart. So that's actually been assigned on your module. Um, what I'll do is I want to go to the course module too real quick for you guys to look at. So this is an example of what we have. Everything we have is going to be on this module. So we've been doing Shakespeare and Macbeth, everything since we've come back is here, is on here, starting with the world of art and inspiration. And then we had our clause notes, which we've gone over. Um, why read Shakespeare, the cami, the, 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 the rhetoric notes over that you can look at, and then the questions. Uh, the background research assignment is on there. Uh, that's due on the 17th. Uh, Macbeth introduction notes, which is basically what we just did, and I'll be posting that. And then you have the literary terms and the literary term fill in the blank. All right. So uh, tomorrow we will ha have a discussion over after we watch Act 1, Scene 1. We're going to watch some different adaptations of that and see what people feel. So any questions, please make sure you let me know. And have a great day, everybody.